Clearly, this was a yeah. deadly insurrection. Clearly, they were attempting to overthrow our government. This is an insurrection. Last week's insurrection was shocking and tragic. We've seen an unprecedented insurrection in our capital and a brutal attack on our democracy on January the 6th. There is a presidential-inspired insurrection, plain and simple, an insurrection. The president of the United States incited insurrection against our country. The insurrection was an existential crisis, a test of whether our democracy could survive. It wasn't an insurrection. It's not an insurrection. It wasn't. They are lying slash exaggerating to score political points. It's interesting. We have a huge exaggeration going on and maybe a cover up at the same time about the events surrounding January 6th. I'd like to bring in Tom Fitton, the president of Judicial Watch. He's been all over January 6th and his group has filed uh, several lawsuits actually to get important records from and surrounding that event. Tom, welcome back to uh, Newsmax. How are you? Hey, good to be with you again. Thanks, Fred. Tom, um, overall, when, and I know you haven't, um, there hasn't been much cooperation from the authorities in giving material, making it available. When they act like this, do you think, in your experience, they are actively concealing something? Yeah, hiding records in an unusual way. I think people can fairly draw conclusions they don't want something coming out. Uh, for instance, you were talking about the shooting death of Ashley Babbitt. Uh, the U.S. Capitol Police has none of the transparency requirements that virtually every other major police force in the country has, and they've refused to provide any information uh, to anyone asking questions. So uh, we sued directly the D.C. Police Department, which would have done some investigations here, and we're getting stonewalled there. Uh, we've sued for the videos. We sued for emails of the Capitol Hill police. Uh, we've sued for information about what Nancy Pelosi was up to. I mean, the irony of this whole January 6th investigation is that the subject of the investigation are the decision makers on uh, related to security at the Capitol that day. It, riots occur. Violence occurs in crowd situations. Oftentimes, almost always, often, all, almost always, because of political decision making by leaders who run police departments, and in this case, it's Nancy Pelosi who's ultimately responsible for the failures of security that day. You have, you were the one who uncovered, I believe, the records that we all wanted regarding. Officer Brian Sicknick. Now, let's be clear, any police officer who joins the police department, I think he's a hero. But there was so much misinformation about his death. First, he was, uh, you know, pummeled to death by Trump supporters. Then he was hit in the head with a fire extinguisher thrown by Trump supporters. And it turns out he died of natural causes. Do you think that that was a comedy of errors, those early reports, or an act of deception? Uh, probably a little bit of both. Uh, it is the government, after all, so you always have to presume incompetence in addition to malfeasance. Uh, in the case of withholding the information about the actual cause of his death, uh, I think it's fair to conclude uh, that uh, it was withheld for political reasons. Uh, certainly, they didn't want it coming out before the impeachment of Donald Trump. Remember that abusive impeachment? We're supposed to forget that. And uh, the fact is that it was only after we sued uh, did the office of a D.C. medical examiner finally release the information uh, about the true cause of his death. He wasn't bashed on the head. He didn't die because he was bashed in the head with a fire extinguisher. Uh, he died tragically from a stroke that occurred after the event. Uh, so uh, this is just uh, another example of, uh, you know, obviously I'm president of Judicial Watch, or I'm going to promote Judicial Watch. But isn't it outrageous? that this day, which we're told is the worst day in American history, uh, it's only Judicial Watch is trying to get basic information about what happened that day, about security, about what police were doing, uh, about what actually, who was actually hurt and injured in the case of Officer Sicknick, if, if there were issues there. And we're still getting stonewalled. Believe me, there are other requests we have pending, dozens of requests, uh, that the police department, the Capitol Police refused to uh, disclosed to us. And I'm concerned, Greg, that, you know, we're going to get more of the same from this uh, January 6th investigation being run by Pelosi and Adam Schiff. Remember the last investigation they ran, 
they were taking phone records of American citizens, specifically Giuliani, and then publishing them. Mm. Without a court-authorized subpoena, they said they could do it on their own. Are they going to start spying on Americans to distract from their own malfeasance here? You know, it seems like they've weaponized the day. If you raise questions about the day or by, oh, so help you, if you defend or say perhaps some of these folks don't belong in jail anymore, like even Jacob Chansley with the horns, um, they'll try to say that somehow you had something to do with the insurrection. If you have concerns about the election, fairness of the election in 2020, they're trying to take those off the table by making this the worst day in history and saying concerns about the election led to this. It is a false, weaponized narrative, and um, I think it's, strangely enough, it's working. There should be about, let's face it, 50 other groups demanding the information that you're seeking as well. Yeah, and there's no doubt the Justice Department treats uh, this group of people who uh, they say were Trump supporters and Republicans and conservatives differently when they commit misconduct and violate the law than similarly situated leftists and communists. Uh, and uh, in many ways, this isn't even about 2020 anymore, Greg. It's about 2022 and 2024 and keeping key players off the table and on their heels as they seek to retain and obtain power in the future. Uh, and obviously Donald Trump being target number one. By the way, we just saw some pictures of guys that we know, Big O at Nancy's desk, and uh, yeah, he's going to be punished, and he already has. He's already spent plenty of time in jail. Um, well, you know, yeah, go ahead. Look, I witnessed violence during the Kavanaugh hearings. I was there in the whole courtroom. I saw it was out of control that day. They were intimidating uh, uh, senators, resisting arrests, uh, and uh, they were treated very differently. And certainly, they were trying to th blow up the Senate. Uh, and stop Kavanaugh from being uh, confirmed. Hey, I, we Very saw, different treatment. Totally. We saw th basically 300 riots for a year, a uh, billion dollars worth of damage, perhaps, and uh, nobody seen... That was all beautiful. It was all beautiful when they took over the Minneapolis police station and burned it down. Remember? Uh, total double standard. Uh, we're so glad you're on the case, though. Tom Fitton... Hey, by the way, you got a great book. Let's go ahead and put that up, if we can. The name of the book, A Republic Under Assault, The Left's Ongoing Attack on American Freedom. Tom Fitton from Judicial Watch. Thank you, sir, very much to be continued. Thank you. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.